Welcome back and thank you to all the people who are following Travel Like an Ocean. It's with your generosity that I can continue on. I know today may be a bit of a dry topic, but I hope I can give you the information in a manner that will put a smile on your face and have you understand why it is one of the key things that you need to get done before you go on a vacation. I will share an anecdote and we'll see how we can make sure that this becomes an essential planning piece in your vacation planning. With that brief introduction, let's begin. I hope you enjoy. Starting our discussion, I want you to recall the last time you went on a big vacation. Some of the things I'd like to cover is how much did it cost? Did anything go wrong that you thought wouldn't go wrong? Pretty important to consider prior to going on your vacation when we're dealing with risk is known unknowns and unknown unknowns. Ah! Many of the known unknowns we could plan for like making sure we have enough money on a, in our budget, making sure we have the time off from work, making sure that your family members are uh, vaccinated and can go on the uh, trip. Those are known unknowns. One of those, of course, is if anything that I had mentioned was not properly planned for and you have an unscheduled outage, for example, you get to the cruise terminal or whatever destination that you're going to. If you're traveling to any spot, especially now in the world, and you get there and then there's this huge COVID protocol and you haven't prepared for that, is the option, the only option is to, to go back home? Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe they force your, your family to stay in some type of um, hotel situation or period of time. All of those things include additional expenses that you probably weren't planning for. But without an insurance policy that keeps an eye on those types of expenses you weren't thinking of, that's one of the major reasons why you want to consider getting an insurance policy. Now, I do want to tell you up front, I'm not an insurance agent, nor am I working for any particular agent. I will be talking about one particular agency that I've used for several years and they've never let me down. And in fact, the anecdote that I share with you will explain how they really pulled my butt out of the fire and saved my bacon on one of my trips. I want everyone to do their own due diligence and find an insurance agent uh, or agency that you, you feel comfortable with. In fact, if you're using a travel professional, which we've already talked about the importance of one, I would certain this is certainly one of the things that they can help you with in terms of recommending uh, the proper type of insurance or insurance company to potentially protect your trip. So keep that in mind and we will go down that route when we get to it. What I wanna try to do is to make the financial case for you to consider using insurance to help supplement your trip. Think about your costs. You spent thousands of dollars okay, for your vacation. You bought your airline tickets, you have your destination, you have your spending money, you've done all the things that you that you wanted to do. You have money for your trinkets, you have all of these things that end up in the thousands of dollars. Imagine that you are at the front end of that vacation and can't even go because of some unknown unknown creeping in and causing you expense that uh, you weren't expecting. That was That's way above what you were planning on paying. One of those real big expenses that could potentially happen is if you get injured during your vacation. That is one big expense, especially if you're out of country. If you're out of country, we're talking about evacuation, hospitalization, transportation, all of those things could easily double, triple what you paid for your entire vacation, all in one incident. But if it, it just has to happen once 
for it to be significant enough to really upend um, not only your vacation, but your whole financial situation in general. Again, travel like an old jig isn't about spending extravagantly all the time. It's about maximizing your enjoyment while you're on vacation and being able to put together um, a series of uh, vacation events that will make you comfortable and have you really maximizing your vacation spend. So I promised earlier that I would share an anecdote of what happened to me on a particular vacation. In this instance, it was a cruise during the December slash January timeframe. I live in Seattle, Washington, and uh, my cruise was based out of Miami, but I fly through Boston because my family is in Boston. But in this instance, I was flying JetBlue, which I love JetBlue, had a great time, no problems, purchased travel insurance. I had purchased it thinking that I would never have to use it. It so happened that the weather in the Boston area was horrific um, when I tried to fly and make my connecting flight back up to Seattle and we actually had a pretty bad nor'easter in which grounded all air traffic in the northeast corridor that included everything down from um, Atlanta all the way up through New York I had no choice I got to Boston trying to get on that last flight out back to the west coast and uh, you know after waiting for a long time it was finally announced that the flight was canceled due to bad weather i kind of panicked because now i'm sitting in logan airport i don't know when the next flight out will be for me to, for me to get to the west coast but then i remembered i got travel insurance let me see how this is going to go i called the 800 number that was provided to me uh, on my policy and boy, I couldn't have been happier with the experience. First, let me tell you what I started to do when I didn't think about going through that, my insurance. I first thought, I'm a world traveler. This is no big thing. You know what? I'm just gonna sleep in the airport. It's only gonna be a day. I'll get out the next morning, take that first fly out, no problem. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, and this is no fault of, of Logan Airport, this is no fault of JetBlue, but when you had hundreds of people getting off of not only JetBlue planes, but all the other airlines and bombarding um, Logan Airport for um, uh, accommodations over the night so that people could stay, it was insane. So basically what Logan Airport, and I appreciate them for doing it, um, provided the people who got there in time was a cot, uh, a bottle of water, and the promise that they would try to make your stay as comfortable as possible, but we would have to sack it out in the, in the terminals. So there were various people all over the place trying to do that. And a lot of people were traveling like an Oching because the majority of cots were up around the bathrooms. It was, it was hilarious. It was like a minefield of um, cots around the bathroom. That's something that I definitely would do because I don't want to have to, you know, run the gauntlet when I have to um, use the restroom. So these people were thinking pretty smart. I got my cot, I laid down, and I couldn't even close my eyes. I began thinking of things like, okay, I'm totally exposed here. I'm worried about my own personal safety. You know, if I'm a fast sleeper and if anyone knows how I sleep, I'm dead to the world. And anyone could have just walked up to me, taken my luggage and walked off and I would have known, I wouldn't have known any better. So now I'm paranoid, I can't sleep. Um, not to mention, uh, it was pretty cold uh, during that nor'easter. A lot of snow, a lot of wind. So they don't exactly turn on the heat. I was like, I am completely miserable. On top of that, the airport announced because of the severity of the weather, it wasn't just going to be one night. It was going to be at least two nights and maybe three before they would even open up the airport again. So at that point, all the people who chose to tough it out and stay at the airport now had to try to find accommodations. Now, this was, of course, made worse because the majority of people who got off the plane and thought ahead 
already said, I need to find a hotel room. They booked up a lot of spaces. There was nothing to be had. At least that wasn't reasonable. Most of the um, uh, hotels at that point realized the captive audience they had and prices seemed to go up. I know it's uh, unbelievable, but it's that law of supply and demand. All of a sudden, uh, hundreds of people need someplace to stay in a pretty expensive city in the first place. All of a sudden, the somewhat reasonable prices became very high or you couldn't book the spot. And it's at that point I decided, let me try my insurance. I contacted my insurance company and they were, they couldn't have been any better in terms of how they supported me. They asked me um, what was the situation, if I needed uh, a place to stay. They immediately found me a hotel, which earlier I tried to call and they said there were no reservations. Doing it through the insurance travel agent uh, in the middle of the night, mind you. Um, and this is a Midwestern company. Uh, so they had people on 24 hours who were able to help me out. Uh, they were able to find me a place uh, at this hotel that I've always wanted to stay at, but there would be no way I could afford it any other way. They were able to not only book me a room, but they also made sure I had transportation to and from, so to the place, uh, to the hotel and back. But everything, as long as you have your receipts, is 100% reimbursable. And I thought it would take forever. That's that's the other end of the story. I was also pleasantly surprised how quickly I was compensated for these things. But anyway, I get to the hotel. Um, a room was waiting for me. Not only that, they had a bottle of wine for me. Um, I got a room. It was overlooking uh, one of the oldest cemeteries in, in the city of Boston. So it wasn't a chintzy hotel. It was a pretty high-end hotel in the Boston Common. And had a great stay. Meals were covered. They got me back um, three days later to Logan. So I got my flight out back out to Seattle. And end of story, uh, the stay for the three days at the hotel, food and uh, transportation cost about 75% of the cost of my entire vacation. That was on top of, of everything I had already spent. So the insurance in that instance really saved me. How much did I spend for that insurance? It was less than $150 for um, the insurance. And it literally saved me um, um, a, a couple grand uh, in terms of, of, of actual cost. So if that's not a, a story of, um, of hope for all of you who are considering travel insurance, I don't know what else is, right? That, that It doesn't get any more compelling than that. Um, that's not to mention uh, the, the peace of mind I had with the positive customer service I had with uh, the people that I spoke to. So great experience, strongly advocate for anyone who's planning on going on any type of vacation to include that in their uh, plans. It literally is pennies on the dollar um, in terms of what you have to put out in terms of the financial outlay to make sure you have that peace of mind to be able to ensure that you have a vacation that you have you don't have to worry about uh, what's going on the one thing i didn't mention before which i need to mention otherwise i would not be giving you a full report out on travel insurance is any insurance policy that you get now you want to make sure it has a pretty comprehensive covid 19 rider the old policy that i talked about in my example um didn't have a COVID rider and it wasn't relevant at the time because COVID wasn't a thing. It is now a thing. And most insurance will tell you that they don't cover particular acts of God or diseases and so forth and so on. But because of the COVID pandemic, certain insurance companies will make sure that they have a rider that will give you the full protection you need. This protection includes um, isolation if you potentially have COVID when you get to where you need to go, returning back home if you have to return back home based off of a COVID diagnosis, evacuation if you get COVID mid-vacation and you have to be evacuated um, to a hospital or back home, potential stays in a hospital until you get well enough to travel back home, and of course that final 
um, uh, flight or, or uh, travel home that you need to do in case of any type of COVID situation. So that is a critical piece that you make sure that you have uh, COVID coverage or a COVID rider. A lot of people don't ask for that. It is important that you make sure you do. And most insurance companies are pretty good about that. But don't make it a guessing game. Ask up front. Whatever travel insurance you get, does it have a COVID rider? And what does that rider cover? I hope you found the information I shared with you today very helpful. I know in the future, this is a tough choice to make, especially on a limited budget you may have for your vacation. But you also want to understand that the importance of insurance cannot be overlooked. Travel Like Ocean will always be here to advocate for the things that a family should do, but it, it, it really is up to the families to actually do them. So with that, I just wish you the greatest and best vacation. I hope this information was useful to you and you'll be able to enact a lot of the things that I talked about here and that the next time that you are on vacation if, and if any of these unknown unknowns crop up, you can say to yourselves, you know what? I'm calm, I'm cool, and I'm collective because at the very least, my family is traveling like an Oching. Until next time. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell.